Well, I'm being joined right now by somebody that the Prime Minister of India, when he met him uh, several years ago on his visit to the United States, described as the pride of India. We have Mr. Vikas Khanna uh, himself, uh, Michelin star chef. Uh, Mr. Khanna, thank you so much for speaking to Times Now. Um, and uh, what do you make of this event? I mean, this is uh, not the very first time that the Prime Minister will be addressing members of the Indian diaspora. Uh, he's done that in the Madison Square Garden back in 2014 uh, as well. And this has become a part of a trend uh, on his part to be addressing members of the Indian community uh, in each and every country that he visits. Uh, what do you make of this specific event that's been organized today? What are you looking forward to? I think this is structured more like a gravity and which is necessary for people who are living in diaspora because we're still looking at some connections back home. And I think PM being such a figure for all of us who is like an elderly family member, I just feel that we all connect to that. We salute that and we bow to that because that is such a big representation of who we are as Indians. And it's a unifying forces that how we're unified in this moment is going to define our structures and also our strength and our success. Uh, Mr. Khanna, uh, we were watching an interview of yours uh, as well, which you gave uh, to an international network almost uh, four years ago. This was during COVID. And you'd been then asked a question about what was your inspiration uh, behind the success that you've now experienced in the United States, having lived here uh, for so long. And you gave uh, a very interesting response to that question. It was, uh, it was about hunger. Uh, and the interviewer appeared to be giving the impression uh, that it was hunger back in India. Uh, that may have motivated you to work that much harder when you came here to the United States. And you gave him a fitting response. You basically said that it was hunger that I experienced here in the United States during my days of struggle uh, that motivated me to become uh, who I've eventually become. And you also gave him the example of the langars that you've actually worked in the community kitchens back in Amritsar, where you hail from. Uh, were there certain stereotypes uh, uh, that uh, you experienced on the part of people here in the United States at the time that you came to the country uh, that you now managed to rectify through your own experience here, your own success here? Has there been a course correction in that uh, perception? Uh, of course, there's a big change right now. You know, you're talking about people, it's so embedded in the Western mind that anyone who comes from India has is starved, is uh, absolutely unsuccessful. Is, um, but I was my idea to give that response was that, you know, we come from middle class families. Yes, right. we're working class, we work hard. But that, that use of the word hunger, it's like hitting me on the belly of telling me that, you know, oh, you had nothing and you came here and you've been glorified. The truth is that we are structured around families in India in certain ways that hunger is a I don't think so many of the kids in my middle class families have experienced the way we are projected in the Western world. And I do feel as a, somebody who lives in America for most of my grown up life, we should be able to stand up and correct that mm -hmm. instead of all the time bowing to the Western media in certain ways that you are right, oh yeah, we come from hunger, we have nothing to eat, nothing to wear. Mm -hmm. I just feel that sometimes it's our leaders, especially in a <laughs> position of privilege like myself, that we should be able to tell them the truth of the matter of fact and overwrite what has been heard before in their media. Hmm. Hmm. If we are going to trash our country in front of the Western media to Ji. take brownie points from them, there, there's no logic to that. I don't think, I don't change my accents when I talk to them. I don't hmm. need to bow to it. I've been given certain strengths with my cooking and skill. I just feel that I need to represent that in highest pride loud and proud they say. Uh, when the Prime Minister was here almost uh, 10 years ago, uh, uh, he had a reception at the Waldorf Astoria uh, and uh, you prepared a very interesting palette of uh, 26 different cuisines representing 26 different states of the Indian Union uh, to capture our university, our unity in diversity, so to speak. Uh, what was the thinking behind that? Tell us a bit more about that and uh, tell us about the diversity of the Indian palate, the challenge of Indian cooking uh, that uh, the people here in the United States perhaps might be still exploring because uh, Indian cuisine is uh, not as generic as it's made out to be. Each state has its own uniqueness, its own uh, uh, feature when it comes to uh, diversifying that Indian palate, so to speak. Uh, tell us about whether or not the nuances and intricacies of the Indian taste uh, have been registered by Americans here uh, in their experience of tasting Indian food over an extended period of time. 
बहुत ही मुश्किल सवाल है ये बिकॉज आई फील के इंडियंस लाइक मोस्ट ऑफ फर्स्ट वी डू नॉट इवन अंडरस्टैंड आर ओन स्टेट डिफरेंट स्टेट क्यूजीन बिल्कुल हाउ डू यू एक्सपेक्ट वेस्टर्न टू अंडरस्टैंड आर क्यूजीन एंड कल्चर एंड the one of the biggest questions or most important question that i get asked all the time is that how do you define indian food i instead of answering back i give them a question mm-hmm. how do you define european food oh, like india is much more complex than entire europe as a continent and this is just a country and i feel that bahut mushkil hai to expect that the western people will start knowing this immediately mm-hmm. and most of us while i'm i'm a chef all the life i've cooked how many cuisines can i tell from within italy mm-hmm. So we also stereotype Western cuisines in the Western countries. So we have our favorites, and we go for that. Okay. But we need an Italian chef to come and educate us, introduce us to new favorites. So that's my job. One dish at a time, I say. One palate at a time, and one restaurant at a time. Hmm. This is my funda that you stick to it, and slowly, slowly, you spoon feed people with new dishes every single day. One restaurant at a time. Tell us about Bungalow. What does it represent to you? What does it symbolize, uh, and uh, why is it so special? Uh, Bungalow symbolizes, uh, in so many ways, um, my entire journey. Um, we have an amazing team here who absolutely believes that culture and cuisine are hand in hand. And every time you see Bungalow, it's about celebration of something about India. Even the festivals, we want to be as a bridge. between two big countries and major cultural mm. bridging which i feel is very important it also redefines our cuisine and culture to our first generation kids who are growing up in america giving them access to india in this way mm-hmm. indian hospitality values ethos rituals every single day if you see that what we do at bungalow it's so thoughtful and so well planned ke you represent the world's largest country mm-hmm. maximum number of people mm. and to say that you know you represent that from a small 100 seater restaurant is not right mm-hmm. but our emotions and our intentions are perfectly right for bungalow that it represents an indian home more importantly a grandmother's home where she just fed us and gave us love and celebrated every festival Well, I'm being joined right now by somebody that the Prime Minister of India, when he met him uh, several years ago on his visit to the United States, described as the pride of India. We have Mr. Vikas Khanna uh, himself, uh, Michelin star chef. Uh, Mr. Khanna, thank you so much for speaking to Times Now. Um, and uh, what do you make of this event? I mean, this is uh, not the very first time that the Prime Minister will be addressing members of the Indian diaspora. Uh, he's done that in the Madison Square Garden back in 2014 uh, as well. And this has become a part of a trend uh, on his part to be addressing members of the Indian community. Uh, in each and every country that he visits uh, what do you make of this specific event that's been organized today what are you looking forward to i think this is structured more like a gravity and which is necessary for people who are living in diaspora because we're still looking at some connections back home and i think pm being such a figure for all of us who is like an elderly family member i just feel that we all connect to that we salute that and we bow to that because that is such a big representation of who we are as indians and it's a unifying forces that how we are unified in this moment is going to define our structures and also our strength and our success